published on the 6th of February 2020 by Emma Yasinki in the scientific journal The Scientist. The article, entitled On the Road to 3D Printed Organs, discusses the recent discoveries made in the field of bioprinting. As the name implies, bioprinting is closely related to 3D printing. 3D printing is used to manufacture hardware and accessories from plastic, metal and other hard materials. Bioprinting, however, is used to make pliable and organic objects. Recent developments have proved that printing human and animal tissue is possible. As you may be aware, 3D printing usually happens in one of two ways. Through extrusion, where a thin nozzle lays down layers of material and gradually builds up the object, or by using a laser to solidify the area of material in a liquid bath of the material. In bioprinting, the most popular technique is extrusion. The material which the nozzle lays down is called bioink. This bioink is mainly made up of water-based hydrogels. Inside these hydrogels are millions of cells. To ensure that the cells grow, develop and communicate with each other, the hydrogels are also filled with chemicals, which mimic the inside of the human body. Structures are usually printed into a liquid or gel bath. This bath helps the tissue hold its shape until it stabilizes. Some bio inks will stabilize quickly, sometimes immediately, but some require physical or chemical processes to stabilize them. Once the tissue is set and it behaves like those in the body, it is ready. In 2020 in Australia, there were just under 2,000 people still waiting for an organ donor. In the US, there were a staggering 112,000 patients awaiting a transplant. Bioprinting could prove to be a solution to this problem. Cells could be extracted from the patient and grown in a laboratory until there is a sufficient amount. These cells could then be used to create the organ which the patient requires. This would significantly decrease the rate of rejection and would eliminate the problem of finding a donor. The imbalance between donors and recipients would disappear. The applications of bioprinting go beyond the obvious such as organ transplants. On average, it takes 12 years and 2.6 billion US dollars to develop a successful drug. Currently, drugs undergo testing in groups of lab-grown cells and then in animals. Those which are effective on animals are finally approved for human trials. Only one of 10 drugs is successful in this last step. Bioprinting human tissues would allow us to skip all three steps of the current process. Imagine the amount of time and cost that this would save. The reduction of developing costs would also mean that the product would be cheaper for us, the public, and would allow the drug to be cheaply distributed in poorer countries. Skin grafts and pieces of tissue made in laboratories would help with smaller injuries and would reduce the need of extracting tissues from other places in the patient's body. These tissues could potentially be used for plastic surgery too. Bioprinting human tissue for pharmaceutical trials would also be the solution to an important ethical problem. It would reduce, if not eliminate, animal testing. In the US alone, there are around 100 million animal lives lost per year to testing. Bioprinted human tissue would be a more ethical and more effective alternative. Printers that could make healthy tissues could just as well make cancerous tissues in humans. Each year, around 25% of patients undergoing chemotherapy die due to treatment-related side effects. Bioprinting could significantly reduce this number by providing tissues on which to experiment with new cures. Doctors would also be able to prescribe tailored doses of drugs to each patient. The first and most obvious disadvantage is the cost associated with further developing this biotechnology and the huge price tag. This high cost along with high demand will result in the expensive procedure being available to only the wealthy and upper class, eradicating any hope for those in the lower and middle class. Another issue which works hand in hand with high pricing is the lack of quality control over bioprinted organs. Quality control essentially ensures that only organs of the highest quality are being manufactured and transplanted into humans. As expected, the quality control of the highest degree means a proportional increase in its price. Those who aren't so well, they will begin to look for cheaper alternatives, giving rise to a brand new black market of counterfeit and bioprinted organs. This not only leads to a huge spike in illegal transplants, but also death alongside it as a result of low quality and poor hygiene. Despite the rapid growth of bioprinting and its uses, the associated risk of new technology must be taken into account. While much progress can be seen through the development of miniature organs, it will take some time before bioprinting becomes an applicable solution in organ transplants. 
Printing complex organs like hearts, kidneys, and livers is extremely difficult due to the intricate interior structures, blood vessels, and the many different types of cells. Providing adequate nutrition and conditions to these organs will also be a challenge. Just like most new discoveries in the medical field, countless tests must be conducted in order to be even cleared for human trials, let alone perfected. Until this occurs, there are still a lot of risks regarding the feasibility of this technology. Bioprinting raises important questions. With the ability to replace organs, how far will we be able to extend human longevity? Could we now implant electronics into organs? Will we one day be able to print full sections of the human body, such as legs, arms, and eventually full human beings? This could be similar to cloning, but different in many ways. How would these new humans act? Would we teach them? Would they have gained the knowledge of their cell donor? How would they integrate into society? Only the future will tell.